Okay, so we already talked about value propositions, a little bit simpler models to match what we offer and our utility carrier and our insight about the customer. So how we get those things to fit together and uh, how we can see how the specification of functions come up between the customer layer, the customer's view to the value proposition and the business that tries to create uh, solutions and activities and that has a cost side so they meet there in the middle with the functions to do a good product we have to translate the fluffy needs to specifications in terms of the output generated with the use if we do that instead of just specifying exactly what is in it we can engineer against value rather than just feature set or cost what the cost will be let's say we found a good value proposition and customers like it and so on. We need to build the business and we do that also first by building it in a model. Just repetition here, we learned from the value model that processes are bundles of activities. The activities needs to be done by somebody, that's the actor. The actor might need assets to perform activities. We need to achieve that value creation we need to have the value delivery and then we have, have to have some value capture. How do we capture revenues for our system of activities and actors? So it seems that we have two sides here. So we have a business side where we have these actors, activities and assets. They are working together as a machinery to produce value. And then we have a customer side. And the customer side has also some elements. So we can call this a business system and this the customer and then the offering. With just these three pieces, you have the simplest business model model you can imagine. And you can do a lot from that. For example, the problem set and the activities you do here between the offering and the customer, that's the world of business. It's about doing the right things, about effectiveness. Your stuff is working to a high degree to have the effect in the external world that you wanted. Here on the left, we have activities that are supposed to produce this offering. The world of management, we do things the right way. And we produce the value proposition at the minimal resource consumption. So already there you have the, what's called in strategy, the external fit and the internal fit. So we have the value network, that's the actors, the key suppliers, key partners. Could be customers that are involved in creating value, like typical example is IKEA furniture. They also do a bit of the work. Uh, the key activities, they're required to do the value proposition, but we have customer channels and so on. They also have activities. Uh, we have to manage customer relationship. We have to manage our revenue streams and revenue model and the assets here. And all that leads to cost. On the other side, we do have the value proposition. We have a customer segment. From whom are we creating value? What are our most important customers who are not our customers? Very important to say we're not serving these. Otherwise, you might be broadening your function set a little bit too much. And uh, for each of these target segments, what are the most effective channels? What do these channels cost? And then the relationship here. You can send emails to customers, but how often do you read these emails that you get from different companies that you bought from maybe once? It's not so good, actually. I don't know why they do it. Somebody said, I don't remember which management guru but no relationship can survive one love letter a day. It's too much. So maybe we interact through the web or in communities. You know, maybe we don't need to interact so much, but when they ask something, really we want to be on our toes and help them well. And there's of course a cost here for all these things. So on the bottom here, we have the revenue stream on this side, because that comes from the customer and the cost structure on this side. And hopefully this right, right hand side is bigger than the left. So Osterwalder 
that I mentioned before, Alexander Osterwalder he and his team at Strategy, they made another book called Business Model Generation, where they boxed these different elements of a business model in boxes on a canvas. And then you can generate alternative business model just by putting post-its up. You put the canvas on the wall, you put up post-its. And let's say that uh, one example I see is Coca-Cola. So what is the value proposition? What is the activities? So uh, is making the Coca-Cola, it's the logistics and so on. And then it turns out that actually we have two customer segments. And this is when it becomes interesting. So they sell to restaurants and they sell to consumers. So use pink post-its for the consumers and then you can use green post-its for the restaurants. So there will be some green and pink ones here. Here, many activities might be in common for these two segments. You have some synergy, and synergy is a very nice thing to have because then you get more out of your assets, right? You get more value cranked out from the stuff that costs you money. So this has become a very popular model. I've changed it a little bit. Uh, so for example, I have key assets, not key resources. And uh, that's because in strategy literature, resources is connected to a massive theory framework. It's called the research-based view that is re really 20 years of paper writing that led nowhere. So resources became so fluffy that it was not useful really for any analysis in the end. And it's really assets mostly like things that you have that you put into work. And then I use actors instead of value network or partners. So the nice thing is that you get free A, actors, assets and activities to the left. And then you have customers, segments, customer relationships and channels, three C's on the right. It has some weaknesses and the main weakness I think is that it's the connection between what is in the boxes that is usually making it really strong, strong growth engine and, you know, uh, synergies and all those things. That is box to box relationships. But I don't use this for designing business models. I use it for other things. Like if someone proposes a business model, I look for weaknesses. So I use it as an analytical tool, not a design tool. So this is the connection here now. We have the value proposition and the insight on our target segments. Now for the business model, we also have to have actors, activities and assets. And we'll start looking at connected networked business models. Mm -hmm.